Hello, I'm Jürgen Bellmann from Sophistic and I want to show you how to use deformation targets in a CSM staged analysis. In my last video, nonlinear optimization, I told you that it would be better to use forces as targets, but a lot of people like to have deformation targets and so we have made some improvements and I show you the really very good results of the deformation targets. Because the big advantage is when we use deformation targets it is not necessary to make a pre-camber. So let's start. We take our simplified bridge to better show the effects. First we guess a pre-stress or a shortening for the cables. Maybe you know I prefer in Sophie Lowe to not insert a pre-stress because this is not what we do. We are shortening the cables and therefore I always input a shortening of 10 millimeters for the cables. We now start with these estimated values. We first erect the towers, then the first segment on the crane without dead load. We insert the first cable and activate the dead load of the first segment. Then we stress the first cable. Second segment on crane, welded, dead load and second cable, stressing the cable. Third segment on the crane and welded, then third cable and dead load, stressing. Segment number four hanging on the crane and welded, dead load and cable, then stressing the last cable. Now we insert the last segment on the crane. Now we activate the dead load of the segment, but with a hinge here and here. Now we weld the last segment and apply the additional dead load G2. What we now see is not a perfect bridge. We see these points are not at set equal zero and we have some other problems. But first now we make an optimization only for the four cables. So please do not try to give all targets and all scalable load cases in the beginning, but first start with the scalable load cases that are very clear. Of course, when we stress this cable, we can manage this deformation. This cable, this deformation, this cable, this deformation, but this cable we can not use to scale this deformation because here we have a support. So we use the last cable to get the horizontal UX deformation of the pylon to zero. Let's have a look to this optimization. We use the scalable load cases of the cable stressing and we choose as a target the EQUU deformation of the node 4 to 5 in Z direction and of 203 in X direction. As it is a nonlinear iteration due to the cable sagging, we make this optimization multiple times equation system iteration nine times and we copy the intermediate results into 80,000 load cases. Now let's see what happens. We start our analysis and when we come to the optimization you will find here iterations one, two. After two iterations the tolerance was reached. We gave here a tolerance of 0.01, that is 10 millimeters. If I increase here the tolerance maybe to this one, 
and we start the analysis. We will see that he needs further iterations to reach the tolerance. When we open our animator, we can now see the results of this iteration. 80,000 was the first run, then the next run, the next run, the next run, the next run, and you see the iteration goes here to deformation u set equals zero at this point, at this point, and this point, and ux0 at the pylon. These four targets are reached now, but of course we see this is not what we want. We now have to take a closer look to this side span. When we again look to the individual load cases, we see when the side span segment is added, it is added tangentially with control cantilever 2. And to get here to the right position, we can make two things. Either we could pull down this node, or what I do here, I insert a ballast at this point to keep this node down before segment 4 is added and welded. To show why I do this, I inserted here a little pointer stick, then I add the ballast, and you see we now only have to scale the ballast that this node is in the correct position when we activate the support. In the input file we now insert a stage ballast side span and in the optimization we use this stage 136 to scale the deformation at node 1 target uset equal zero. When we run this, we again get two iterations of our optimization analysis and we can check the 80,000 load cases if everything is okay and we can also open the animator to see the staged analysis including this optimization. So we look to the total analysis, segment one without that load Dead load stressed, next segment stressed, next segment stressed, and now comes a ballast side span. This ballast side span was now optimized so that in the next step, when we add the segment, this position is zero. And we can now go on stressing this and this and this, and we see when we come to the final load case additional dead load. The bridge here is okay. Now we have the last problem that we inserted a kink at this position. When we look to the bending moment of this final result, we see here the bending moment is balanced, but here not. And we want to get here also a negative bending moment of the balanced bending moment distribution. So let's go some steps back. We have here the last step before the mid span closing. We activated the last segment without dead load hanging on the crane. Then we activated the dead load of the last segment hanging on the hinges. And now we want to weld this segment, but we see there is a kink. So what can we do, of course? We introduce here a ballast to avoid this kink. For this, we insert a stage 207, where we insert the ballast. Then we weld our segment. And then, of course, we remove the ballast again. In the optimization, we now say this ballast load case 207 shall have the following target. We want that the beam bending moment of this last segment shall not be zero. It would be zero because there is a hinge. But we want at the end stage 500, we want to have this bending moment. And this bending moment was the bending moment that we get when we analyze our final form finding. So a bending moment for a balanced bending moment analysis. 
We could also use alternatively a deformation target that we want the rotation at node 5 shall be the same as the rotation at node 55. We can add this here in two lines. That means that the rotation of node 5 and rotation of node 55 shall give together zero and that is just the same as we want that this rotation shall be this rotation. When we run this analysis we now get the final result. Again the segment is added hanging on the crane. The crane swims away, the segment hangs here on the hinges. We add the ballast at this point and we see the ballast now leads to a tangential good connection. Here we see the little gap. Now we can weld the segment and this little closing element is added. Then we remove the ballast again and when we then add the additional dead load we get here a straight bridge without a kink. And now we get what we finally want, a straight bridge including construction stages and a balanced bending moment. So again at the end we now have a perfect straight bridge and it is not necessary to make a further pre-camber. Now one word why it is not so easy for the CSM program to handle deformation targets. When we want to stress this cable here, I now also inserted here a little pointer stick to show it. When we now stress this cable you see that this of course has a high impact on the deformation of this node. But this node is not already activated in this construction stage. So how can the CSM know that when stressing this cable, due to the control cantilever 2, this has also an enormous effect on the position of this node. Now the CSM optimization tool is really using such a pointer stick to calculate the effect of a cable stressing to a node that is not already in the system. And you can check what CSM is doing in the report. Please go to the last CSM output of your analysis and you will find here also the targets of your calculation. In the first run we had here 105 millimeter for the first target and you see after the second and after the third iteration the target was reached zero millimeter deformation. When we scroll down a little bit we see here in case a target node not, was not active in a scalable stage and that is the case when we stress this cable the node number 5, here is a double node, number 5 and 55 for the hinge. When we stress this cable, this node is not already activated. And we can check it here. The target number 5 in the construction stage stressing the first cable is not activated. And we see that this node is cantilevered to node 4. That means from node 5 to node 4, the program CSM did as if there would be a little pointer stick like a cantilever. So, as a conclusion, please first start with only a few targets. With these targets that you are sure that the stressing of the cable can reach this target. And then further you can look to details maybe at the side span or to a possible kink in midspan. If you have a high deformation of the pylon here below, maybe this point goes down 10 millimeters. 
and you have a lot of cables, then keep in mind that then it is good to also give a target of 10 millimeters down to these points because only then you get a straight deformation of the superstructure at the end. Thanks for listening and goodbye.